I am elected chief of the Salatan First Nation. I've been here all my life. My role in the community as a chief uh, covers many aspects of what takes place in the community, from economic development to the welfare of children. So it, it, it covers a wide variety of what we do here. Right from the outset, when the project was first announced and discussed, uh, we started having uh, it being a part of the community discussion. And every time we had a community meeting, whether it be on a monthly basis or every four months, we'd mention the drone project and, and what it was doing and what it was about. A lot of the members didn't understand the technology, didn't understand what it actually meant until they physically just started seeing it or were a part of having that medical device bring them their prescription. And once that started happening, the word got out and a lot more people were intrigued by it and were more interested. And there was always a comfort level. No one was no one was afraid of it. They were excited and very welcoming. The UBC Drone Transport Initiative is, is really a partnership project uh, between many groups, most importantly the Stilatin First Nation and the village of Fraser Lake. It's really those people coming together and from their respective organizations to put together a project that embeds drone technology into the healthcare system, if you will, partnering with an Indigenous community such as the Latin First Nation, a non-Indigenous community um, such as Fraser Lake. What it has done, it's, it's re-energized an old relationship. Uh, we never had much of a relationship with our neighbor. I mean, obviously we shop there, uh, there's visitations, but nothing really as far as pairing up together to do, do a project. So what this has done is, is we've, we've asked the question of each other, what else can we do on a larger scale that would benefit both communities? So the village of Fraser Lake is, you know, roughly around 1,200 people. So we have a municipal fire department. We have a local RCMP detachment. We have a BC Amlet station. We also have a, a medical clinic and we have a pharmacy. So within the scopes of this project, every one of those agencies were able to be involved at some capacity. Working with Transport Canada to develop new policy uh, we were able to simulate a, a downed drone uh, with e-documents, e-trial documents. So the volunteer fire department uh, worked with the project and Transport Canada to really design what should happen in case uh, the unlikely event that one of, one of the drones does go down. But this will help Transport Canada develop policy uh, that will be useful in the future. One other thing this project brought to the community was um, a sense of pride of being the first. Um, but more importantly, being considered. First Nations communities in general are not very high on the list when it comes to medical technology. So the, what this does, it brings pride to the community. We're the first. We're kind of first step in the technology to bring this to other communities. And, and we're proud of that. We're proud of the fact that other communities are going to tap us on the shoulder and ask, how did it go? What's your thoughts? Uh, do you think it's a good fit? And everything that we've seen and heard and done here would, would, would welcome them to say, you should, you should do this because it's, it's, it's a good program. It's a good project. And I think you guys would benefit from it. The community members, both in Fraser Lake and Stilatin, really volunteered their their appreciation and enthusiasm for this work. Um, I think it became obvious that as the months ticked by, people's interest uh, and positivity around the, the whole project grew and people wanted, came to see healthcare providers like myself and wanted their prescription to be sent on a drone. That, that was really special. And so um, people saw themselves as being a co-creator in something new and I think that again that was clear today in the closing ceremony of how the communities felt they were part of, of the DTI of the drone transport initiative and that uh, I think really sets us up, up well for translating the lessons learned to other communities in the future. When you have to go get your medication or you have to get a ride to Prince George or anywhere, you have to have the ride already a week ahead and then we don't know when we get our appointment and then we have to rush around, find somebody to give us a ride. And that's been my problem. I can't get anybody to go get my medicine for me.
it cost me money to go get gas and when this happened, the drone, when they started bringing that around, at least I had a little money to myself. And now I don't have to worry about getting my medicine. Now it comes to me. And it's really awesome that, you know, this can get out to all different people. So I think it's simply awesome. I um, was quite impressed with all the uh, project, ongoing project on the drone, and uh, very happy to be somewhat involved in it as well, to contribute to some degree. And uh, a lot of the people around here are quite excited about it. And, just the end, end result that it could potentially uh, serve for, say, uh, medical transportation and stuff like that for other uses, especially being uh, us being First Nations. Um, and it's a good positive note that we start on doing, doing a project like this. The drone and a telehelp helps have community members stay at home, and, and that, that's a big thing to them. They don't have to travel into a foreign city or a town or speak to people that uh, don't necessarily understand their cultural background. And so it provides that, provides that service that where they can come to the, a health center that they understand and, and know and uh, see the doctor. In the beginning, it was a little foreign, but now they've gotten used to it, and I think they enjoy it, the, the fact that it's, it's, it, it's there and it's, it's more convenient. With this project being based here in Fraser Lake and Stilatin, it was an ideal uh, project to bring youth in and have youth engagement. You know, in rural, remote areas, advancement in technologies doesn't come by every day. And to have these kids to be able to have the drone brought into their school, to be able to have classes go down to the drone spots, both in Fraser Lake and Stilaco, to understand the technologies, we also had a naming of the drone contest, uh, which uh, was great. We had lots of submissions and uh, the drone name was called Sky Medic, which was named by uh, someone out of Mouse Mountain. And then we had a, a logo design contest uh, where the logo for the project was designed and that was won by a, a female student here right at Fraser Lake Elementary Secondary. You know, I was working yesterday in the community of Stilatin, writing prescriptions, sending them to the local pharmacy in Fraser Lake, and the drone was able to deliver them. That, that was something that couldn't happen last winter, for example. So I guess that's a really practical example how far we've come. Um, the number of flights is really, again, noteworthy and special. We've completed over 1,200 flights, but the achievement of actually moving goods advancing our working relationships between all the partners that has been without question the greatest achievement I think in all this work. In remote communities the roads are not paved there's hardly any traffic going in and out and so a drone would oh god that would help so many people the fact that we can take this pilot project and what was learned from it and to hopefully implement a program like this in an area that is a lot more rural than Fraser Lake or Stilaco and a lot more remote as well. There's so much more that can happen with further distances, with newer technology. It can really help rural and remote Indigenous and non-Indigenous communities. My hopes is that we are the launching pad going forward and that we are kind of the main, you would call it a drone airport to supply other First Nations within our area. Um, I think that's probably, you know, I would hope that would be the next step. I personally believe that this work can't just end here. This is, this is not the conclusion of this work. There's been very little done in, in our province or, and country around the integration and use of drone technology in, uh, in the healthcare space. So my hopes and dreams are that this will foster enthusiasm and widespread support that will allow us to take this year of work, the DTI work, understand what the data has clearly shown from the people, from the flights themselves, and move forward 
and really intercede in the erosion and the decay of healthcare services for these communities, that we will actually reverse that trend, that we will strengthen communities and allow healthcare delivery to grow and prosper. That's the future.